What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and I was very vocal about my terrible experience with iOS 17 beta one, but now that beta two has been out for a few days, I wanted to share how my experience has been. And while some things have improved a lot, I'm still a bit disappointed in a few key areas. So in this video, we're going to talk about that along with some additional iOS 17 beta 2 features, what to expect from the public beta of iOS 17, the first beta of Vision OS 1.0, and more. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about some additional iOS 17 features and changes because we have quite a few. I covered more than 140 new features and changes in my beta 1 video, and then in beta 2, I covered covered about 35 or 40 new features and changes, and we have even more to discuss. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is name drop. So this is the new feature where you can exchange contact information with another iOS 17 user by simply putting your devices close together. Now, I wanted to tell you that in my beta 2 video, I said that you needed to have AirDrop set to everybody. You needed to change your AirDrop settings to everyone for 10 minutes. Now that is false. You do not need to do that. So that was just my assumption. I should not have made that assumption. So I just want to clear this up that name drop does not require you to change your airdrop settings. Now, a lot of people have expressed concern for this. You know, isn't that a privacy concern? Well, not really, because when you do name drop, you still have to confirm whether or not you want to exchange contact info with that person. So if somebody's going around, you know, putting their phone up to people while out and about, the other person still has to hit a confirm button for anything to happen. And in my what's new video for beta two, I did mention the new micro location toggle right here under system services. And I thought that was related to name drop and airdrop. I still think it is. But what's weird is that when I turn that off, both of those features still work as intended. So I will continue working and trying to figure out what micro location exactly does. We also have an update on AirPlay in hotel rooms on the hotel room TVs. So LG is going to introduce, they're gonna be the first TV manufacturer it seems, to introduce the LG Pro Centric Smart Hotel TV. So this is going to include that built-in AirPlay technology. So I guess we may have to see like something new added to TVs for this feature to actually work. But what's cool about this feature is that not only will you be able to AirPlay you know your device to that TV but also it's going to automatically connect you to the hotel Wi-Fi so if you just get in your room and you haven't even connected to Wi-Fi yet if you just simply airplay to the TV it will auto connect you to the Wi-Fi as well so you don't need to ask for the password something else new in iOS 17 has to do with asking Siri to send a message so watch this send a message to BB. So up top now we have a little drop down where we can select where we want to send that message. So before it just defaulted to messages, but now if you have like WhatsApp or even Gmail or other, you know, third party mail applications, you will see all of those there. So you can send messages to people, not just via messages when asking Siri. Also new in iOS 17, we can now have live photos on the lock screen again. So this was removed in iOS 16, but it's now back. So if you go to a live photo and then go to use as wallpaper, you will notice that we have the movement right there. And we also have this little element down in the bottom left to either turn on or off that live photo. So if we go ahead and add this and then set as wallpaper pair, I want to show you how this works. So when you unlock your device, you will see it's very slow. It's like it slows down the animation and it doesn't go for very long, but you can see it's kind of like a parallax effect. It's pretty cool. Although I do wish that we can make this a little bit longer. I wish there was like a setting where we can change the duration of the live photo. Another thing I would like to see is if you change the animation in here, like for example, if I wanted to change it to bounce, I would like to see that reflected on the lock screen, but that is not the case. It just continues with the regular live photo. And then we also have a change if you go to a photo that's larger than the display size and then go to use as wallpaper before, we had this really strange like blur effect at the top. And now that looks a little bit different here in beta two, you can kind of, you know, manipulate the photo a little bit more than you could in beta one. Now, one of the biggest changes in iOS 17 is a change to haptic touch to where it feels like 3D touch, or at least the closest we've gotten to 3D touch since 2019. Let me show you what I mean. So if you go into your settings and then go to accessibility and then to touch, and then we're gonna go to haptic touch, you will notice that we have a new toggle here for default. So before it was just fast and slow, and now the default is what was fast in iOS 16. So now if you change to fast in iOS 17, Everything is much quicker when you haptic touch and it feels 
as close as we've gotten to 3D Touch, again, since 2019. Like for example, if I go to Safari right here, take a look at how quick that opens up. If I go to Messages, if I go to any application, everything opens up much quicker than it did in iOS 16. And it really just brings me back and wishes Apple still made the you know touch sensitive screens, the pressure sensitive screens. There's also a new widget style for the clock. So if we go to our clock now, we have this new clock three widget, which looks a little bit different and it's also more transparent. So if we go ahead and add this widget, you will see how it looks next to the old style and I think this looks pretty good and it does change based on your wallpaper so let's change that yeah i think that looks much better than the old style if we head into our settings and go down to safari and then go down to profiles i noticed that when i make a new profile it actually creates two so it seems that personal is a default profile now so i created this one main right here because i was just testing out the profiles feature and it automatically created the personal profile as well. So it seems that is a new default. And if you go into Safari and then you go to the tab view, you will notice we have a new glyph icon down there in the bottom middle. And when you tap on that, it shows which mode you're in and it shows that we're in personal right there. But if you want to change the profile that is right down here. So if you want to change it to main, for example, it will change just like that. And you get your new glyph icon that you have set here in settings In the health application. We have a couple of changes in the state of mind section. So if we go into here, you will notice that this UI looks a bit different. And we also most importantly have this calendar view up in the top right hand corner. And if we go to that, you will see a calendar view, a month calendar view, of your state of mind and what's cool here is that you could tap on any day that you choose and you can see what you logged that day along with a daily mood that encompasses like the entire day it also shows when you log something throughout the day it shows the time of that right there and then we also have this little eye next to state of mind and it kind of gives you info about what this calendar view is showing in the shortcuts application if you go to the automations tab and then go to add a new automation and then go down to transaction we have have a new UI here. So here's what it looked like in beta one. It was just very bare bones, looked like everything else. But now in beta two, it kind of has bigger glyph icons, kind of just, you know, gives you a better view of what you're actually doing with this automation. And it also says when I tap instead of just when. And before it just said transaction type and you had to choose, you know, payment, transit, access, identity, all of that. But now we have categories down here. So you can see categories of everything along with merchants. So you can see different merchants to, you know, utilize this automation as well. So much better. I can see this automation being extremely useful in multiple scenarios. Something else that I noticed while installing beta two is that you can now on the software update screen, swipe down down to check for an update. So before you just have to go out and then back in and constantly keep doing that. But now on the software update screen, you can swipe down to refresh just like in Safari. Another change is inside of the phone application. You will see we have an edit button up in the top left. Now, when you tap on that, that's where you can not only select all of your phone calls, but we also have an option there to change our contact poster. So if we go ahead and tap on that, this is a quick and easy shortcut to get to the contact poster without having to go into the contacts application and then going to your contact. Also new in iOS 17, you can now lift a group of images, even if they're not connected. So I have two different subjects here. And if I tap and hold to select the subject to like cut it out from the background, you will notice that we have a new select all option. And when you tap on that, it will select all of the subjects in the picture, and then you can copy them and paste them elsewhere. If we head into our settings and go down to our Siri and search, you will notice that we have a new section here for Siri in calls. So it says Siri is available to respond to requests during phone and FaceTime calls. Also in these settings, we can go down to before searching and we have a new reset hidden suggestions button. And when you tap on that, it says resetting will allow previously hidden suggestions to remove showing up again. And when you hit reset, it still shows there. So it's always just an option to reset easily. Also, if we go into our accessibility settings and then go down to Siri, we have have a new toggle here to change the speaking rate. So if you want Siri to respond and you know give you your answers faster or slower, you can now adjust that speed of which Siri talks. In the shortcuts application, we have a new action to make an image from rich text. So before we could make an image from a PDF page, but now we can also do that from the rich text, web content, or URL passed in as input. Now, as far as the bug fixes and also remaining bugs, I do want to point out a couple of things. So 
first off in iOS 17 beta one, I was very vocal about this because it annoyed me like crazy. But every time I went into a sleep mode and then out of it, it would respring every time when going in the sleep mode and when coming out of the sleep mode. It happened every single time, but now thankfully beta two has resolved that. I do not have any more crashing based on the focus modes. Also the music randomly stopping seems to have been fixed. However, the crossfade feature, which that is fixed now, by the way, if we go into our settings and then down to our music settings, you will notice that we do have crossfade enabled and we can change the crossfade settings there before that crashed. But anyway, crossfade is not perfect. It's still having a lot of issues. At least once a day, I run into an issue with the crossfade kind of just failing to work and just skipping to the next song. Also in beta two, we do have a fix for the square outlines that were around the airplay menu. However, we still do have a couple of issues. Like for one in the notes application, I still have an issue with my keyboard just simply not showing up. So I've had this multiple times times now. And the good thing is I don't have this in messages or really anywhere else throughout iOS, but in the notes app, for whatever reason, my keyboard sometimes just does not open up. It's just blank right there. And I have to force quit out of notes and open it back up for it to show again. And then I do also still have the issue with airdrop staying in the dynamic Island and on my, you know, little live activity section here on my lock screen for a long time after the airdrop has already completed. So I wish we had a way to just like eliminate that after a set amount of time, because that is pretty annoying. And it's same, you know, the same thing happens with location as well. Like when I close out of ways, for example, it keeps showing my location up here in the dynamic Island. So that's a bug. Hopefully that will be fixed soon. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance is much better than beta one. So for the past few days, I've really been able to take this in and, you know, I've had about two respring's, I think maybe three over the past few days, but that's nowhere near as many as I had in beta one, where it would happen multiple times. I'd be lucky if it happened three times in one day. So beta two, definitely more stable in terms of performance over beta one. And by the way, when I talk about performance, I'm not just talking about bugs being fixed. I'm talking about actual raw performance. Like the animations are smoother here in iOS 17. I showed this in my what's new video, but especially in the podcast app, like when going in and out of the queue view right here, that was especially laggy in beta one that's been resolved. Just the animations and the fluidity throughout iOS 17 beta two is far better than it was in beta one. But of course, not everything is great with iOS 17 beta two because battery life you know, I said that I don't think battery life could get any worse than it was in beta one, but I have to say that I think beta two is actually a little bit worse than beta one and battery life. Now I'm not saying it's a dramatic change because they feel about the same to me, but if I pull up my 14 pros battery right here, it seems like the stats say that battery is actually a little bit worse. Also, I really hate that this activates like every time I put two phones together. So I hope there's some way to like just disable this feature because look at this, this is just annoying and I cannot go out of this animation. So that's annoying. Anyway, let's go to our battery. I got to keep these far apart now. So if you take a look at my battery over the last 10 days, you will notice that battery life is not great. Like, yes, I'm using my phone a lot, but again, I'm still having issues with when I'm asleep, my phone is still using a lot of battery in the background like with the home and lock screen I have music and snapchat and then right here I have again mail showing up so for whatever reason mail is still causing issues with the battery life especially when idle and just for reference by the way iOS 17 beta 2 came out on Wednesday so we're looking at the last three days right here and comparing that to every day before that so these three days you can see I really did not spend as much time on my phone as I did in previous days but take a look at the battery usage the battery usage is actually, you know, in some cases higher, like right here on Wednesday, for example, take a look at how that's higher compared to Sunday or yeah, it's sun Sunday right there where I had more activity, but I used less battery life. So it looks like battery life again, I'm not going to claim that it's like much worse or anything, but battery life to me has not improved in beta two, which is really disappointing. I know it's a beta. I know what I signed up for. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just giving you guys an update on how my experience has been over the past few days. And by the way, based on history, the battery life usually starts to get better around beta three, because that's typically when Apple pushes out the public beta. So I would expect beta three to improve battery life, which, you know, that's not saying much. I really can't see it getting any worse than this, but uh, yeah, we should get better battery life starting with beta three, and then we should be on 
more of an upward trajectory after that. And speaking of beta 3, let's talk about when to expect that. So I would expect iOS 17 developer beta 3 in about two weeks from now. So again, I've mentioned this before, but I would expect it on the week of July 3rd. Now, of course, we do have to keep in mind that the 4th of July is a holiday, a pretty big holiday. So I would not expect anything to be released on Tuesday, but we could see that third beta on Wednesday or even on Thursday. I don't think we're going to see it on a Monday. It's possible. Anything's possible with Apple, but my guess would be after 4th of July. Now, if we get that on the 5th or the 6th, my guess is that we would get iOS 17 public beta one the following week. And usually that occurs on a Monday. So maybe July 10th is what we could be looking at for the first public beta of iOS 17. And by the way, speaking of that public beta, I did want to address, you know, with beta two, a lot of people, including myself, noticed that it does not say developer beta two. So some people implied, and a lot of people have asked me, does this mean that the developer beta and the public beta are just going to become one? And to that, I say, no, absolutely not. I think that the public beta will still be treated the same as it has in years past. I think that this was just you know, maybe it was just an error on Apple's part. Maybe they're just going to keep calling it, you know, beta because you technically know that you're on the developer beta. It says it right there. So, you know, I don't think this changes anything in regards to how Apple is going to roll out the public beta. I think that's going to remain the same. They're going to be two separate things because with the developer beta, you still have to have, you know, an actual developer account. Even if you don't pay, you still have to have a developer account. With the public beta, you don't need a developer account. You just need an Apple ID. You just need an Apple account. So that's kind of the difference there. And then also this week, we saw the very first beta of Vision OS 1.0. So Apple released the SDK, the software development kit for Vision OS, which means that developers can now actually start building applications for the Apple Vision Pro headsets. And what's awesome about this, aside from the fact that Apple showed some of these third party applications like actually in use and actually working and they look amazing. You can see these different applications they showed off. I think they just look incredible. But aside from Apple showing off those awesome applications, we also kind of got a hands on look at the UI and the UX, the whole, you know, everything on the back end of this Vision OS software. So we can see some things that we didn't know about before. Like for example, we now have a guest mode. We're going to have a guest mode on the headset. So that's something we've been waiting on on the iPad for a very long time. So it looks like it's coming to the headset before the iPad. Now we also have a travel mode and this is really cool because there's actually some settings that change when you enable travel mode. Here's a look at what the control center and the spotlight search look like. You can see that very translucent menu just looks so awesome throughout Vision OS and also visual search is really cool because this is a feature similar to visual lookup on the iPhone, except I think this is even more useful. And I say that because this feature is going to allow you to use the headset to get information about items like in real life, like you're going to be able to detect and interact with text in the real world. So if you see something on a wall or in another language, it will just translate it for you. For example, you can copy and paste printed text from the real world into applications on the headset. Again, you can translate text between 17 different languages and more. So visual search is going to be incredible on this headset and Envision OS. We can also see Siri. You can see the settings, the uh, you know settings application, and also how you can move windows around. You could also set multiple timers while in the kitchen, which is very convenient. And I have to say for a version 1.0, like beta one, like pretty much an alpha build at this point, it just looks so impressive and, and much more refined than I thought it would be. Now, granted, I am, you know, looking at this in Xcode on a computer and not on the actual headsets, but everything looks amazing. So if you're a developer, download this SDK, it's included in the latest Xcode beta and, you know, get to work because a lot of developers are finding it to be pretty easy to work with. I've seen a lot of developers on Twitter, you know, showcasing their applications up and running on Vision OS, obviously not on the headset, but on their computer. And they seem to, you know, the overall consensus seems to be that it's not super difficult. It seems like it has a lot of very similar elements to what you see on iPad OS, for example. So there you have it. That is the latest on iOS 17, along with a quick update on the new Vision OS 1.0 beta one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 coverage just like this. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Check out the Apple Den newsletter and I'll see you soon.